Okay. I will call the meeting to order. Call the roll, please. Mr. Christensen? Here. Ms. Bennett? Here. Mr. Watkins? Here. Ms. Baca? Here. Mr. Davis? Here. Okay. If you would stand and say the pledge with us. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I salute the flag of the state of New Mexico, the zeal symbol of perfect friendships among the United cultures. <laughs> Mr. Davis will lead us in a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Father, we thank you for all the many blessings we enjoy, and one of those is this city we live in. And as we today look at those issues that are before us, pray that you will give us knowledge and understanding. And guide us in every way. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Okay, has everyone looked over the minutes? Yes, I have one correction. <clears throat> it's on the very last page, a uh, page that has the signatures on it. Uh, we're down at the bottom of the big paragraph. Uh, Mrs. Bennett stated it needed to be a motion to approve or deny. And Mr. Rackler, well, I said approve, deny, or table. You had three options. No, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Okay, just need to add that. Good catch. Anything else? I'll entertain a motion to correct the minutes as said. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay. New business. A resolution providing for a variance of construction standards for the platted but undeveloped road known as South Ithaca Avenue, submitted by Aaron and Amber Numa. I will entertain a motion to go into public hearing. So moved. Second. Okay. I have a motion and a second to go into public hearing. All those approved say aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, we're now in public hearing, and Ms. McClellan will give us. Perfect. Uh, we do have some people here to speak on it, so I'll just go over my stuff real quick and then get out of your way. So if you have any questions between the two of us, we should be able to answer them. Uh, so, with this variance for, it's uh, variance on roadway development, the ones we've been seeing often. <clears throat> um, so, in the black section over there, the property on the right, they're looking at putting a home. Um, and these are some areas we're familiar with because we're doing a lot here. So, of course, for us, we would need South Ithaca, South Ithaca uh, to be developed up to the property before a permit can be allowed. Um, the variance is asking to allow the remote the road to remain as is, which would be undeveloped. Uh, we reached out to the other departments. Fire and, Fire and EMS is not against the application, but wants property owners to understand that not having a developed road could hinder their ability to perform their job. E911 addressing had concerns. Uh, and that was what Johnny turned in. Uh, just a quick summary is our addressing concerns was having no road means there's no range for addressing. And then of course, PNZ has the same recommendations always on roads, um, have them bring it up to code. But if, as the president has been set as a half road, that a half load be the minimum um, that we allow for this area. We did send out uh, notices um, the certified le letters we received two four from property owners which goes to go to the next page oh and this is just uh an idea of kind of the plans of where the house would be and then the road in question which was south ithaca there it's chris we go to your next one oh we can way off um these are what the department said Ms. chris your next one perfect here's what i was looking for uh two property owners were for it and then seven out of the seven utilities, one was for the proposal. There was zero against. I believe that's all I have. So if you have any questions for me, I'll sit down and allow the applicants to answer some whatever you guys got. 
We're good with you, Kelly, for the moment. Yeah. So I have lots of questions, but let's, let's, hear, it let's wants, hear it all. Anyone who wants to speak for or against has to come up and get sworn in. And, uh, oh, at the same time, or just one at a time? Just one at a time. Okay. I'll still swing. We're back to swing. Oh, I'm back to swing. Okay. Okay. Yeah, the same thing was the referee went to and said we need to be swearing in. So through they'll be reverting. Miss Insania is allowed. You'll state your name at the podium on the mic, please. Sammy Stanford. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that you will testify truthfully here under penalty of law? I do. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Um, real quick, uh, Sammy Stanford and uh, Amber and Amber, uh, Aaron and Amber Dumont asked me to uh, present their request for variance and and try to provide the findings for them. Um, they certainly will be able to, uh, I'm gonna do my best to present the necessary cause for a variance. They're certainly here to also answer any questions or proceed. Uh, most importantly, I'm gonna present a reason, reasons why we should maybe grant a variance, but most importantly, we want this family to uh, have a path forward today that, you know, where they can develop this road, build their dream house for their family that they've been wanting to. And um, if you don't mind my approach, I have just some exhibits I'd like to uh, share. Thank you. So in uh, getting started, uh, the request it seems to itself, the, the request for variance for this seems to fall in limbo in your code. So normally when we're subdividing, we don't want to do curb and gutter or roads. We ask for a waiver from the subdivision requirements. That's how it's established. Well, they, they're not developing a subdivision. They're not sub subdivided. This land was subdivided many years it's really not ever been developed or subdivided. It's a it's a, a mets and bounds description for this particular nine acre parcel. Now what's happened is it's developed around them and the, all around them is full of subdivisions and other developments. And this nine acre parcel was almost forgot about as far as that goes, but they still have some access. So it doesn't really fall under a waiver. So the process we're following is for a variance. Well, variance is typically zoning. It's typically use, setbacks, et cetera. It's not really in the zoning either. However, we nevertheless, we're here. We acknowledge that uh, this is a typical practice that the city's done and to provide these. So, so we're here, but it is there is a little limbo area in your code, just uh, pointing that out. Uh, so... As per the variance, we have to prove three things to you. That there are exceptional or extraordinary circumstances or conditions applicable to the property that may, so I'm gonna start with that one, that's number one. So if you could look in your paper in exhibit one, up in your top left corner, this is a survey of that property. So as you can see, we see Ithaca, Lot one, you have a summary plat, Aaron Amar Duma. But if you'll notice the right of way, it's a 60 foot right of way. The right of way is not 60 foot. It was never dedicated right there. It's uh, that parcel belongs to Mr. Davis. It was never part of this. So in doing so, we don't have a 60 foot wide easement to even properly build the normal 38 foot road. I believe your code, by the way, says for local streets, 36 road, curb and gutter on each side. Ithaca, as it stands, is actually closer to 42. But regardless, I'm just kind of pointing this out. So as you can see, if we extend the curb line all the way to that intersection, 
it comes to a complete dead halt. There's no public right of way. So that's, you know, one of the first uh, things I'd like to point out. Now, he does he still have access to his property? Sure. It's just not as wide as normal. It's not as robust as it normally could, and and extending that is a little difficult. Can I ask you a question now, or yes. do you want me to wait later? Sure, I'll try to answer it right now. Okay, this was a subdivision with 17th Street in Ithaca. All that was in a subdivision, correct? Yes. Then why was Mr. Davis allowed to put that little corner in that subdivision? Because Ithaca should have went all the way to the other side of 15th Street. Well, I can't tell you. All I can tell you is, so that that subdivision was Mesa Street, was developed in 1960-something. That's Mesa edition, right? Yeah, uh, but I'm not talking about that one. He put this subdivision in. He had a subdivision for 15th Street intersecting with Ithaca. Mr. Davis has that corner out, and he shouldn't have ever been allowed to have that corner out because that was part of the subdivision, even though the property that he has is not in a subdivision. Do you see where I'm coming from? You're talking about on Mr. Davis's side. On Mr. Davis's side. See, we've got that little corner there. That plot for that subdivision had Ithaca and 15th Street intersecting, so it would be a street. Mr. Davis's little corner here should have never been allowed because that was part of Ithaca and 15th Street. I don't know. The, well, we should know because there should be a plot of this somewhere where Ithaca and 15th Street meet. You know good and well there is. The, well, the plots that I found for this does not indicate that. So what I'm guessing... You guess, have 15th Street just going to a dead end and not heading into well, Ithaca? Yeah. It's property well, so I can explain briefly what I think happened. This doesn't matter. That was never made. But this was made, 15th Street was made to come down to Ithaca. That should have never been that little corner right there. What? This what what Mr. Davis bought was out in the country. This is what Dumas bought. It's out in the country. So don't tell me that 15th Street and Ithaca was never meant to join up. Like I, I don't know. It may have been meant, but what I'm guessing is the developer of the Mesa edition didn't own that land. What I'm guessing is he never owned it at all, and it was never dedicated, according to this survey. He never he never owned uh, what Dumas have right now. He, he never owned that. Dumas, and and I don't know the original hatch. I don't know. I'm guessing that the reason it's obviously to me has not been dedicated to the public. That's usually what happens when the plots brought in the developer. And of course, this all happened in the '60s. I don't. But what I'm guessing is the developer comes in they have to they have a big parcel of land they have to dedicate those to the right away and i don't know why that wasn't somebody should know it is probably a record somewhere and it should be brought up and found well i did look at this i pulled up the clerk's plots same thing the tax assessor's maps although it doesn't show it as bad as this they show the same thing and so that's the only information that I would know. About. Common sense, though, should tell you Co one street will intersect another. Street. Common sense would have told us. Common sense would have told us that that should have happened in 1963, as well as these roads should have been developed properly then. But none of us were around. I wasn't around. It's certainly not any of our faults. Okay. I just want to be sure that everybody knows that should that little corner. I don't know how many feet it is. You know, because it's half of Ithaca Street, and it's and and all it does is go right up there. Uh, I understand that those two pieces of property are out in the, in the country, or were out in the country. They were, yeah. And that that when they were purchased, they were in the country, and so there was no subdivision deal there. But I'm telling you, there was a little bit there and there, and that uh, that's where we run into a problem when we tried to get Dumas. An ingress and an egress. Yes. So uh, I don't agree. I mean, I don't disagree that it should have happened. I don't disagree that something went wrong there. But all I can tell you is, is the way it is right now. Yeah. And this is the way it is now. Maybe the city needs to declare a eminent domain there and do something. But 
there's nothing we can, there's nothing Mr. Jim or this family can do to solve that. That's the way it's done. But yes, I, I agree with you. There's a problem there. And that's part of what I'm pointing out. I'm not disagreeing that something was dropped at some point. Actually, we know it's dropped. Because if this was all done correctly, all of this would have been developed since 1960. Except un these lots like this that are undeveloped have been a problem in our side, and I've been there. I know how you feel. It's been a problem for years. So we're, we're just trying to deal with it. And again, hopefully, we're going to come up with a solution because there are unique circumstances for this. And, and that's what we're seeking. That's what uh, we're all seeking here. So I agree with you that that is an issue. But I don't know how Mr. Duma can solve that with the property that he owns. And so anyway, let's um if you're okay, we can proceed and then maybe we can come back to this in a moment. Um uh, so part of the reason I'm saying we're requesting to leave it is as is is um this has been the access point for years to this property. We have some pictures here showing it. This is the access point that was get granted um, to the back of Mr. Davis's property, to his backyard, also to this property. It's been there for years. It's been there since all of this was developed all around it, since the 60s of the Mesa edition, since Valencia School was developed. This was the access point. You can see the road to it. One of the... Um, it was an access point before the city ever annexed it. Long before the city annexed us, this was an access point. Now, let me ask you a quick question. If this was the access point before the city annexed it, before the city had these rules, would you fall under these rules before then? Because it's still the public right-of-way. The right-of-way is still there. It's just not developed to the current city standards. So it's still got to be the access point because it was always the access point long before was in the city limits uh, before really that piece of land almost was forgotten about because the owner of it didn't probably didn't stand up at the time. But nevertheless, that's just one point we're bringing in. Um, this variance is necessary for the preservation. Item two, we got to prove that a variance is necessary for the preservation and enjoyment of the property right possessed by other properties in the same vicinity and zone. So I'll bring up a couple. Don't want to really bring it up, but we have exhibit, if you look exhibit 10, this is actually in Mr. Davis's property. And I've been informed that this commission probably did not prove that, that it was overridden by the council, but I will bring up exhibit 10. We have a subdivision, which I remind you, my client's not subdividing. He's just developing. He just wants to build a house. So we have exhibit 10, which is a, is a replat, actually subdividing, and we have an access easement that's avoiding all of these requirements of road, paving, curb, and gutter. No, I'm not faulting them at all, but I'm just saying the question two says, is there other things in the vicinity or the same area that you're not entitled to? So I'm just pointing this out, but that's one of them. I'd like to point out another one. It's not in the same vicinity. If you look at exhibit nine, that land's on but see those two parcels right there? The two large ones are 301, 320, or 330 and 929. <clears throat> those are owned by the city of Portales. They've recently been replied. Now granted, this is tax assessor's map. I haven't seen their plat. But if you look, not only did we not develop that road, we didn't even provide road frontage to the first lot. How do you access that? Granted, I don't have the plat in front of me, but the other roads on the tax assessor's map show where the roads are. So did the city not make themselves put in their own road right away, develop their own road, sell those off? I don't know. Don't care. I'm representing my client. I'm just pointing out. These are other things that's happened. <clears throat> so um, I think we have a right in the area that's that's close, and we're showing you some other areas in town. 
there is a misconception. I'll show you another one right here. Track B summer E plot by Mr. and Miss uh, Bridget. Richard and Viz Bridget Segovia in Red Exhibit 1. If you notice, that's Chad B. Summer Replot. Well, all those lots were plotted. They were plotted in 60, 80 foot increments. Summer Replot comes in, we combine all those into one. Real easy process in the Summer Replot. We go to the mayor sign it, we have the chairman sign it, turn it in, and it's done. But a Summer Replot is a subdivision. Same way with the bottom. All the summer replot, it doesn't alleviate you from the rules. It only alleviates you from the process. You still have to substantially comply with the rules. So if you're gonna summer replot these, honestly, they should, that's a subdivision. They should have been able to have to come in. The city's gonna do it here by a summer replot or whatever. It's, it's, you're just avoiding the process. You're not avoiding the rules. It's not a way to get around the rules. So again, we have two situations in the area. I'm pointing to another one in the area that looks appears like uh, have been granted that has not been allowed to my client. So we're pointing that. Is there one not too long ago that we told them they could put in half a concrete street? Yes, of course, I'm not pointing that one out, but I, but you stabbed him. I'm telling you, he, he's, he's a slip attorney. Yeah, no, no, uh, no, it, you're, you're just pointing out what you want to point out. What what we, want. Exactly. That's what we agreed to on, at that time. Yeah, exactly. And half concrete street. Sure. And by all means, we want to come up with a solution to it. We don't want these people to have to wait another six months to come back. Again, I hope we can come to some kind of agreement, but for a moment, uh, if you'd let me address the three findings for variance, and then we can jump into some of that if you don't mind. Uh, the last one, of course, is developing of this waiver will not have an effect on the other property owners. I mean, really in the area, it has an effect on anything as far as city growth. It doesn't, it's gonna dead end right into their property actually if you want to know the truth, it needs to have a dead end sign. My client will surely pay for that. It needs to say dead end there. We don't want to close the road. We can't. Uh, but we can't really develop the full 36 wide road and get through there. It won't work. Um, we could certainly put up a dead end sign. The client could, we can put cleachy. We can put down nice gravel on top of it. And we can use the existing right away as it is. You'll never know the difference. My client's very well aware that the city is not gonna come in and take care of it. That he's absolutely, he knows that they're not gonna come and maintain it. He's not gonna be able to call them every time there's a pothole. He, he understands it. Uh, but it literally is this dead ending right into his property. Best thing to do, put up a dead end sign. We'll put cleachy down, the gravel down. He'll have access to his driveway and uh, we're done. And this is not an access that he's, you're granting him. He actually has access now. It's access that was granted years ago when the city accepted. If he wasn't in the city limits, again, I don't think we'd have to be here. But it is, and it's moving along. Uh, so what we did begin to ask for is, you're going to lay down a bed of cleachy. We're going to spread lime water. It makes it incredibly hard. We're gonna put gravel on it because these days it's hard to find an oil spreader to spread oil to match the existing road. The, the curb and gutter doesn't make a lot of sense of the curb and gutter all the way. It's gonna just run right into Mr. Duma's property. If we could stop, even if we had the curb and gutter, the worst thing is we'd need to stop it at some point where it just ran into the city. Yes, ma'am. Are you are you talking about on his property right now? That's what you want to do on his property. No, I'm talking about on this roadway too. On the roadway from the paved part of Ithaca to his roadway. Well, from the paved part of Ithaca to his roadway, what we propose is uh, initially, and it certainly open to agreement because we really need a solution. But what we propose is is we're going to come in with a bleachy. We're going to pack it with lime water. We're going yeah, to cover it with about, this is for Ithaca. Ithaca. We're going to cover it with gravel and let that be the, the path. And, and you uh, take care of that from now on. 
He'll take care of it. It's going to be something that the city is going to have to take over yeah. at some point. Is you know, the, what well, the, the city is, you know, the city has that responsibility right now. But my client's very well aware the city's not going to come out there and do anything other than what they would do for any street, which we all know is in the law. Right? We know that the city can't come out there and every time you get a pothole. But at some point, that's a possibility that they're going to say, we want a street, the city fix it. Well, why did we say to uh, or to Eric Segovia, you got to put in or do it half, 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 half a concrete deal. road? Half a concrete road. Why did we say that to Eric Segovia? We agreed to that. We agreed to that. And that so I don't know. Why should we do something different from somebody else? That's not well, the, the biggest uh, it's, it's access to his property, and Eric could have went in without that. Yeah, well, no, it's access to his property. The biggest the biggest thing we're claiming is this was the access long before it was annexed. Let us maintain that access. We'll develop it. We want a nice driveway. He's going to do that for his driveway too. Let us develop it such as that. It's always been the access. He's they're not complaining right now. They're not, it's Cleachy Road. It's been built, but oh, well, what our initial request for the variance is, let us continue with that. It's been an access that wasn't used very often. A home gets built there and there, it's going to be used more than it has been in the past. That's true. Therefore, the wear and tear on that road is going to be worse. And we have in the past made people do a half of a road. And that's all we've got because Mr. Davis has encroached on the other half of the road. Yeah. And, and we, uh, and that's what we do with Segovia yeah. at that time is, okay, yeah. we agreed to half concrete the road. Yes. Are y'all willing to do that? Yes. Potentially. We run into some, we run into a few issues. Um, that is, we've really worked through many problems. And I don't care if you, you put the same kind of road material that's on Ethica. And I mean, I want to tell you the uh, the concrete may be too expensive just so it matches Ithaca. And it is a road because I'm going to tell you, and if they got kids, which I say they do, they're going to be in and out. They're going to have kids years and out. They're going to have parties. They're going to have graduations. They're going to have all kinds of stuff. Not those that's, kids. Look how cute they are. Yeah. <laughs> that's <laughs> why that's, they're so sweet and nice. They're going to have a lot of company. There you go. And I'm going to tell you, you need a good accent. And you don't want you don't you want those kids safe on that road? You want it safe where you know it's gonna be and it will match what we've got. I can't, I'm like you, I can't stop what happened with the other part of it, but you can do something to make it safe for those kids halfway from where Ithaca stopped up to his property right there. Then what he wants to do on his property to me it's is, his, is his business. No. Okay. You think at some point the 15th Street? Oh, the city didn't want us to do anything about that because you know that's that they didn't want us and to I, change that. And I'll tell you, there's a couple other things that's not indicated on the plot, but you know, as you, the reuse line, there's several city lines run through there. There's a uh, I don't know what you call it. from the reuse line. There's big uh, concrete manholes and things that just work on 15th the, Street. Yeah, in yeah, 15th that's Street. That's why they didn't want to manage it becomes a um so we get a little tight through there we can certainly make something nice we do get a little tight in there staying off of that stuff and with the other property so we can we can come in here we can turn that in there and come up there i don't want to commit for mr duma but let's just say equal the same road or better with concrete or whatever so even if we were able to do that we still can't we still can't meet the we still can't meet the full 38 wide and oh. we certainly can't meet it um as we jog through there we can i think we can get to around my judgment calculation around 17 feet wide would be the, how far we could get through and so 17 feet roughly half of a 38 foot road and 17 would be roughly half you know, not not counting the twenty. Sammy, do you know how much space is between 
I guess that would be the northeast corner of Segovia's property. Yeah. And that and point. Steve Davis's. Yeah. I think there's a 17 feet plus eight is uh 25, roughly 25 feet. If but, you drew it straight, it'd be 25 feet over. Yeah. Well, roughly, but if we took the curb and gutter straight. See, I, I if don't we see, took the curb and gutter straight, we're we're at like 17 feet. I don't I think works well for Mr. Segovia. Because I don't think you put the curb and gutter in the 15th street. I think you ended there. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh yeah. 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 You don't go up curb and gutter. You're not going the 15th. No, you just go to that point with curb and gutter. And then you just do your whatever material you use. Like I'm I'm not a, opposed to asphalt or whatever that chip just sealed. chip sealed or whatever, but I think it needs to be something that is safe and usable. And you curb and gutter it, I guess, to that point, uh, halfway. And I don't even know since since we're doing chip seal and you say it's gonna it's gonna deteriorate. We've had that problem. Mm -hmm. But that well, is the big period. I'm just saying, I don't want anything to have to come back on the city and say, now y'all take care of this. Fix it. Sure. So likely what we would uh, prefer to do is actually, if you keep, I'm going to guess the east side. I think this is east side. We'd, we'd likely want to probably bring the road on the right side of the road take it up there, we'll put the curb on the right side of that road until we get to Mr. Davis's turn into his back one, which is really close to that intersection. It's really close. And then what we would do is- we Would, would jog... you put a curb on the right side because that's really the middle of the road? No, he, I think he's, he's, he's doing in, that. Right here, straight down. Oh, you're talking about curb on all the way wide, wide spot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. On this eight, way. just shooting straight down on exhibit eight. Yeah. So we'll, we'll come down the seventeen feet and keep this curb until we hit Mr. Davis's turn, which is somewhere. Yeah. We'll keep the curb in. We'll do the 17 feet. And then right here, we'll, we'll have to get jogging. And let's just do this. We'll just have to jog in. Yeah. It's going to be exactly like So you want to do the east side instead of the west side. Which yeah. I, I would do with the west side, which is a is a straight shot through. Well, that, the only thing is, I believe it's only fair. Because yeah. if now, if uh, Mr. and Mrs. are getting the community impact, Someone's already, that. Someone's already got curb. So we'll take care of the right side. Yeah, I see. We'll come in here. So we'll straight down here, right? Yeah. On eight. Yeah, we'll come down. We'll take care of the right side. Because if you do it on the other side, we'll have to, so we'll have to stop the curb before it hits Mr. Lewis. The way that the curb is. And then we'll walk through there. This is where we'll This is good. So they'll be able to learn what we'll see. Well, there's where they can come in the middle. Oh, right. Exactly. Yeah. And that, that seems to be the first uh, possible way. So, trust me, I know we're coming in asking for nothing. We, we've, we've waited on We've been going. Yeah. And so we know we're coming here. So, uh, but we do have some good circumstances. No, I think it's in the month of the year when we'll try to do it. So, that I can go off. This of the road? Yes. I I don't think that needs to be cliche. I think that needs to be curb and gutter. And no, no. That's right there. No, that's what we're talking about, curb and gutter. And then... No cliche, though. It needs to be some kind of asphalt. But not cliche. We, we, uh, we've we've, 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 we've I weighed that. I mean, we'd look at cliche with gravel. We've weighed the cost of if we could make chips so we would not have chips in the air. And all it's chips so we it's going to make you boil and then grab it. Well, it's hard to find another one. There's just really no one. And the cost of paving that is tremendous. What we did about the clean sheet or covering it with gravel is not sufficient for you. Um, we'd likely look at that. And we would do, we'd have, we got an engineer already looked at that. 
six inches of concrete. They they uh, do it in a way where they tie in together, has metal in it. We do that with the curb. So concrete is your cheaper. Con concrete appears to be cheaper for us at this time. Whatever's cheaper, but I I'm not going for the the pleachy and the and the gravel. gravel because I think it's it's part of the city, it's part of the subdivision. Yes, somebody screwed up, and that's the story we hear every day at one of these meetings. You know how it is. You've been here, you've, you've done it. And so uh, I think it I think it needs to match. I won't say it needs to match, but that's what we did with Eric. It was it was it was concrete. I think just said like concrete or whatever. Yeah, just 17 feet. 17 feet. And then if so you take this in and partially abandon. So if Rick Segovia, we, yeah, please. If Rick Segovia was to come in and develop his house, he would be responsible for the other half. Correct. All right. My question so is you're going to take from the curb here and go straight up and you're going to do whatever bleachy pavement, concrete, whatever, yes. all the way across to here. So well, what's going to happen? Yeah, what's going to happen? We're basically bringing it up here before we hit Steve's gate. We right. have to stop. Right. I got and that. we visited with uh, Steve on that, on how that works. And it's somewhere in this facility. Okay, and then what we do, we take our 17 feet and we just have to jog it over into here. So what is this distance from curb to where the existing road is? Having... Yeah. The distance? 62 feet. Well, no, 60 feet. Okay, so we're, we're 60 feet from here to here. Right. That road's 42. There's 42. roughly eight feet on each side, right? So, roughly. So, is this pretty much close to where that existing cleachy is now, or is it over here? The existing cleachy is, is on this picture. On the beginning of it. So, the existing cleachy is uh, actually here in this red. Well, I'm looking at, looking at this right here. It looks like it's somewhere over in yes, that's that correct. vicinity. Yes, that's correct. So you're saying it'll go here and then at some point curve around. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sammy. And then it Mr. Segovia and we can back that on it here so it matches the street. Right. Right. Yeah. So we can need the curve roughly just we stop it here roughly. We uh, built 17 feet of road right. As we get up here with this road, we just have to jog over it into this road. And the curb and gun on this side. And then when this property develops, require the same thing. Them to develop there. So curb and gutter. At no, least the, the to curb and gutter would be on this side. But I'm saying when this is developed, you would require them to go ahead and put in the curb and gutter on this side. Right. And finish the road however this is finished. It, it's exactly like what we did with Segovia. We we made it to where he was responsible for his side of the road. And as soon as the neighbor was going to go in and develop their house, he would be responsible. Just like we for did his. with Lopez. And that little roundabout is exactly like over there at the high school where you have the property lines messed up. And so the road just kind of zigzagged around. So, so we would go with concrete concept. up to the end of the curb and gutter, and then you're wanting to do from, I'm no. going to say Steve's entrance to Duma's property, you want to do the cliche and the stuff. Well, we'd certainly entertain that if you made us do the if concrete we, all we, the way we just now. Uh, that's fine too, but we would certainly, if we could stop there and do the, the cliche with Gravel, yeah, I'm pretty sure street. We would do that, especially if I can reduce the next day. With the results and well, well, you don't know. That's that's, just, that's not much, and that's what we were said. If they ever put in 15th Street, they're going to dig it up anyway. Right. They yeah, that's how it is. That's just how it is, my name. Well, and so uh, addressing, yeah, I'll address the addressing issue with you. Luckily, I was here when I started it. Address most of it, put it in the computer. So it is a it is an even it's forty nine one one uh addressing. It's to give us, I don't remember what the concern was with addressing. 
But addressing is only 911 things. Call 911. How do I get to my address? Well, we certainly don't want to address it off Gilmore because right. can't get there from there. So you say, give it a number where you know where to go. Well, yeah. uh, I don't remember exactly. Yeah, you have to look at the concerns they had, but you are off of a public right. You're off of Ithaca. Right. Ithaca's goes there right now. So it's hard to say that you don't have the public right away because that right away is there. It just hasn't been developed. We're going to develop that. It still meets, it's still in Ithaca. Ithaca dead ends into this property. It's easy. It's a 14, 1500 Ithaca. It's right in those, those areas. Dead ends right there. 14, 1500. Mr. Jim is going to have a sign in his gate. 1500 Ithaca. It'll be the only house, but the, it'll, be the, the, it'll be the only house with the Ithaca Street number because no. nothing else has an Ithaca number. And Mr. Watkins, tell you this: those firefighters, they know this town like the back of the hand. They know it better than address. They've learned it. So do your emergency responders. That's your number. Will you have some problems with the pizza guy? Yeah, for a while. It'll take some time before they get out there, but they'll learn it real quick. You'll know where it, where fifteen hundred Ithaca. Is. They don't know that right around, but it will be the only one off Ithaca. But Ithaca, they do have access to right away. And depending on how you approve it, could be concrete, could be uh, however you approve it, but that's, that's access is that uh, it's there right now. If they're out there working and got called, this is an unfortunate, we can't get an address. Really, I can't think of any reason why not to because people have oil wells out in the country, other things they have addresses. That's because if you call 911, you need an address. You have to have somewhere where they can go. And it's the same way on the highway system. You're at 39,000 US Highway 70. We need an address. Someone's out there working, riding a dirt bike, which is what they used to do out there. They need those addresses. So, yeah, the address is an uh, issue, is an issue, but I don't believe it's uh, anything that's a problem. They do have access to that. I could see it without any road frontage or any easement at all having that, but there's access. That access is dedicated to public right now. And so I don't see an issue with the, with the address. I would, I would like to ask if, because that is a 42 foot, road right there and for for us to be fair to Scobie if he goes over there and has to build the other half and you've been mentioning 17 foot sure I mean would it would would it be okay to go to 22 well, you know I'm there, I'm there. Okay. Uh, so your your code is 36 foot wide road with uh, a foot of each side, which makes no great. That's when that needs to be 42, which is a little bit more. But more like the car over here, right? If you're okay with it. So, this alley here, everything is really broken. It's not as clean as it looks on here because there's really no curb. There's a gun up there. Mm -hmm. What we thought, what if we could do this? We might even come in here and jog over just a little bit. With our curb and gutter, jog and then come up and then maintain that 17 foot. Now we're talking 17 foot for this part of the area, 17 foot for the other part of the area. That's your 34. We'll do half of the 36. Okay, so 36 plus a foot. So it's 18 plus a foot. The foot's the curb and gutter, 18. So we'll do, if we could jog this over just a touch, come in there like that. We would take then 18 foot. This would be 18 foot from there to there. And then they would have 18 foot. Okay, bring your wrong, bring your dog. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Sorry. So what we do is there's really no, there's really not a good eight here. Yeah. What we do is we probably come up here and just jog it in. Jog it in a little jog bit. It in. Bring it down here. We'll do, we'll do 18 foot here. Urban gutter on this side. Stop it here. And when they do it, they'll have 18 foot. It's not exactly 18 foot. They should be able to log in just a little bit as well to make that all. 
Uh, and that would be fair, and that meets your code. Both sides is this Would that make sense? And we can, we have, some, Mr. Knox has drawn this up. Uh, adding taken off, we've drawn up several times, adding taken off because we didn't know for sure we needed to come have this conversation. We can have that curb line drawn up by Mr. Knox as far as that path and way to go. Uh, we would just ask that maybe instead of having to come back to the floor and do it with the it's time to consume. We need to be approved by staff or by one of your staff to look at that, look at that proposal a little more in depth so that maybe we didn't have to come back to the floor. But we're certainly amenable to that. Again, we would take it, we could, as uh, Ms. Walker stated, we could stay on that. It just means that both sides would have to go much more room than they could. So if we maintain the 42 foot, means that they would do 20 and then the curve, and they would do 20. And so if we do that to 18 foot, I think both parties would be uh, much happier about that. And they really based on this road and where it's going and what it's going to say. Yes, we really hesitate to have to put in any extra. Right. Thank you. Does that, does that yeah. So half of Ithaca going up to their house would have a curve over here, and then all of a sudden we come in like this way and make it narrower, is what you're saying. I've got to figure out how to get through there without getting on Mr. Davis's land and not getting into the city's stuff. And, and I don't know exactly. Like thinking about kids driving at night. They're coming, they turn, and here's, here's this deal right here. Oh, I got I to gotta switch like this now. Or I'm going to bump the curb and jump the curb, and I'm going to do something really stupid. Well, because I got I got grandkids. I know the stupid stuff happens. I'm just I'm just giving you our best. Yeah. Again, we're, we're trying to solve it. Well, it's I know not. that's your best, and and yeah. we're in here for the safety of everybody yeah. concerned. I mean, I'm I'm I am. You know. Any other questions, comments? Me, I would rather keep it wide and keep the curve all the way down because then, to me, that is less dangerous, especially at night. Kids coming home late after ball games, late for curfew, whatever. Or you're just so tired. So yes, <laughs> got to get home. I mean, I want it to be safe. Yeah. I want it to be safe for those kids. Yes. But would you? Doing that curve, when you doing that curve and gutter thing at an angle, that to me is not safe. I just believe that there. I don't think that the curve is really going to be an issue. I, we have so many curves in our lives now that I don't think it's going to be an issue. Well, it's not a curve. It's a curve that's going to go at an angle. And those girls look a little young, so they're not driving yet. So no, but they will they be pretty be learning how to drive that curve. If if the fire truck needed to get through, yeah, well, uh, yeah. So normal normal driving lane and uh, buffy. Right, so we, we can get we can get seventeen, eight feet, ten feet to that job. So we know now. Is it going to allow for two way traffic right in there? Yeah, probably not, and I don't know how to resolve. No, it's not going to have. I mean, so, if, but Mr. Watkins, you know this. If the place is on fire, you're getting in there. If the house is on fire, you know how to get in there. I mean, ideally, sometimes, yeah. sometimes yes, sometimes no. I understand. So. But yeah, it's definitely 12 foot is one lane traffic, 24 foot in a parking lot is two lane. That that's standard practices. Uh well, we can be 17. I think that's about it. As we turn that jog, I, I think we're I think that's where our limit is built. I know it's a tough decision. We're just pointing out some of the problems we have. Uh appreciate it. 
I don't know if Mr. Dumoulin or Mr. Heflin would like to speak, but if you have any more questions for me, I'm glad to answer. Thank you. Thank you. Anything? No, I don't have anything Okay. Ms. Kelly, I do have to ask on Mr. Ledbetter. Um, I appreciate him sending that letter and stuff, but with issues like this, I think he needs to start coming to the meetings just so if we have questions for him. Because I would like to know if we approve this with the the little changes that are obviously are going to be put in here with the curb and the concrete. Is he going to be okay with addressing it with those changes? Yes, so usually, um, as far as he's expressed to me, so it would be better if he was here because I'm no longer an expert. Uh, his more on is rain, and he ranges from the beginning or the end of the nearest developed road. So when that road is developed further, he can do range off it and address off it. But his concern was with the developed road being. 900 or being 908 feet from the nearest E911 range, that that would put with positive contacts. Okay, so this moving forward was um, would alleviate his concerns. Okay, but we will ask him definitely if he can do start attending these next matter. Question, you know, it's a jobs issue. Yeah. Speaking with Mr. Duma, if the jobs see there's an issue, a couple options, we could go ahead and develop the the left side of that. It is a possibility. Um, at that point, I don't know what happens with Mr. Segovia. If they come in and develop the right side of that or whatnot, since they're in traffic, but I guess we could develop the left side. It just... Um, Creates a problem later, but that would keep it a little bit better of a straight shot through there. I don't know. Again, 17 feet is 17 feet is still all we got to get through that little job. So either yeah. way. So from between Mr. Degas' pants and where the perfect yes. on these. Yes. I don't know. I'm just I'm just a grandmother that's really paranoid that teenage kids driving <laughs> and want them to be safe. Because I know they're they think you're going to always be safe. Sometimes things happen and it will break your heart. And actually, <laughs> and actually, if your motion happened, if your recommendation happened to be half of the road or 17 feet of road or whatever that is, um, if, if it's suitable, just let that be your action and then We'll talk to our engineers and our surveyors on how that would work and with staff approval. That way we could stay on the left side, right side. However, maybe not really specify exactly which side. And that gives us a little bit of leeway to submit the, our drawings to staff for their approval would be the other um, option we might ask for. And that gives us time to work a little further with our engineers and come up with a better solution to them. Um, if you guys would like, we could do that with uh, Steve and then addressing and then EMS, uh, emergency food services, if they're okay with the road design, uh, then you could just take it to council without bringing it back. That would be part of your for staff. Those of you who have uh, proven designs for that. Okay, any other questions, comments? Then I will entertain a motion to go out of public hearing. Second. I have a motion and a second to go out of public hearing. All those approved say aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, we're back in regular session. So I will entertain a motion to approve or deny aye. the variance with stipulations if someone wants to put that all to mention. Okay, let's look at this. <laughs> no, I can't. I can't see a darn thing. I'm sorry. How do we approve something? I don't think we can just approve a variance without putting stipulations into it. 
Well, I, mean, I think we can put the stipulations with the 17. With the 17 developed in concrete. 17. On what side? Are we going to pick a side? The right or the left? The I east think or the west? off of Kelly's suggestion. 17 it, foot. It's 17. Leave it at 17 foot. And whenever it, they get done with their engineers and stuff like that, it still leaves it open so it doesn't have to come to us anymore. They can take it to the attorney and to city council and get it approved. So are we going to, do we want it on the east or the west side of the road? We leave it open. It, leave it's, it a, open. it's an open-ended whether they want it on the east or the west. And that way it gives it the capability of not having to come back to this board. It just goes to the city attorney and the city council. After the engineers, they get with their engineers to see which one is the better for it. You just put a number on the link, basically. What is it? Do you remember how many people oh, Sandy? Urban gutter that we can recognize approximately. Um, I think it says on the PowerPoint. We uh, well with us, we would stop. Yes. I think either side we're going to stop. Fifteen. At the right at the edge of that. Fifteenth Street. Yeah. yeah. Whether whether we do the right or not. Okay. We're going to stop. So we can just put it in there as urban gutter. Urban gutter. One side of the road. The south edge. One side of the road. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the so, south edge of Fifteenth Street. And we're going to stop right as that 15th line. So we're going in right at that point. Right. So we just don't know where to how to end. And while we're going to, do we mention anything on 15th Street? No. Mm -hmm. they, they can develop that. How many see that use? So you're saying we stop the herb gutter and everything will stop at that south side of, of yeah. that. And then we can, we can line. Do it come on in there. Makes it work for. Well, we ideally, my ideally, Mr. Schumer would we'll probably want to do that on the left. So we would, but I'm thinking we're going to take it all the way. We'll stop the curve and get it right there at that point. And then from there, you know. So you're so, adding value to someone else's process. So it'd be roughly 60 feet, be roughly a little bit less than 60 feet off of that. It'd be allowing to develop it with Cleachy and. Oh, the last yeah. part. Yeah, the last part. Yeah. Roughly 60 feet because that 15 is right away is 60 feet. So yeah, and it's not developed. So, so we'd roughly stop right there with have the 60 remaining feet that uh, he could do with the Queechee and gravel if you so allow him. I think it's safer for your kids if you walk on the west side instead of the east side. I just, I'm just a crazy girl. I just think it's safer. I think we're good with that. West side's fine. That's how we initially planned it. And then, uh, so do you want to stipulate that? Probably. Yeah. I mean, if they found someone to do chip seals, I'm thinking of us or a host. Well, no, and if it's more expensive, I mean, I'm not going to make them do the most expensive. No, what I'm saying about the West is that's only half of the road and then the property over to the West. Responsible. Yeah, you know, uh, chip sill is over there, curb gutter, chip right. sill. And uh, chip sill is much easier road to build other than we don't have anyone around here that spreads the uh, oh, handle that kind of work. Yeah. So, um, whatever's cheaper, the chip sill or the concrete, I mean, I mean, I would leave that open to you again, but, but you know, that's what I wish we had done with Eric Scobia, but you know. minimum of uh, but the minimum of the standard of what's existing. What is that? The county's been looking down. And out in the county. Chips here? Oh, it's a little bit right. different stuff. It's similar. I mean, so somebody's doing that. Yeah, they, there's, they, somebody's getting oil somewhere. Yeah, that's just oil. another thought to. Yeah, no, it, it is. It's just, it's not that you can't get it. It's just that for 200 feet, it's hard to get anyone here to do. No one locally is just here doing it all. Yeah, when you do a couple of miles, it comes to many. Okay. So someone want to make the motion? 
first? Well, first, I'd like to clarify with Ms. Kelly. Kelly, their application is to be able to develop a residence on property and the road is to be left as is. Do we need to deny that and then go in there and make our proposal for yeah, so you would deny them uh you would deny the application, uh, but then your recommendation would be it go to city council with these stipulations. Or they could uh you're right, they could also amend their application. With y'all approved their bill. So whatever stipulations you want, that's what you would be in instead of the so are we going to ask them to amend their because all they asked for to, uh actions okay wait uh all they asked for is providing for a variance of standards for the platted but undeveloped road is and they just wanted a variance right. and and if we just give them a variance that's that's like an open book right so you can approve because, yeah, that's what the resolution says. You can approve it with the stipulations that you want, and then I'll add those to the resolution. Right. So we can add this, deny. Deny the variance with the stipulations. We approve the variance with the stipulations. Yeah. Ready for this? Come on. So I'll make an attempt. Here we go. We approve the variance stipulating that there must be 17 foot of some type of material other than bleachy comparable to what's comparable to what the city would put. People too are exceeding existing revenues. Yeah. Is that fair? Yeah, that's fair. People Including a exceed. curb on one side, curb and gutter on one side. To the south. Yeah, just with curb and gutter with uh, stopping at uh, 15th. 15th Street. I'm just going to throw that in there. Let's put it all together now. <laughs> Did you all get that? Did you get it? <clears throat> we shall approve the variance stipulating that there will be a 17 foot wide thoroughfare with curb and gutter on one side at a material <laughs> comparable to what the city of Portales would put in or better or greater or better for that road Ithaca yes. up to yeah. I second outside of the south side of I second that So are we good? Yes. <laughs> I have a motion. Do I have a second? Definitely second. Oh, you second. Uh -huh, okay. I second. I have a motion and a second. Call the roll, please. Ms. Bennett? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Mr. Watkins? Yes. Ms. Baca? Yes. Okay. That will go to the council. Well, yes. after with staff approval, yes, with staff approval. So yeah, with staff approval. As long as you've seen the, yeah, we can bring that to you relatively quick. Uh, if I need any more, uh, yeah, so we're just basically going to show the line of, uh, and have to decide east or west side much. of the road. Hopefully next time it's a little bit easier. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank is a public hearing for resolution PC number 2024-2025. A resolution, resolution providing for a variance at 417 South Avenue B for the installation of a carport that does not meet D3 zone regulations submitted by Nicholas Lance. I will entertain a motion to go into public hearing. Mm -hmm. 
Second. We have a motion and a second to go into public hearing. All those approved say aye. Aye. Those opposed, we are now in public hearing. Miss Laura is going to give us some information. Okay. Kelly wanted me to go ahead and go over this one since I'm just a little bit more familiar with their application. Um, initially, the homeowners came in to build a carport in their driveway. And upon reviewing their application, I found they were in a downtown zone and downtown zones don't allow for the carport to be in front of the main building. So that is the variance they're asking for, as well as it being um, closer than 10 feet to the main building. So this was their plan they drew up. I believe it's 20 by 13, and then it'll be 10 feet tall. So regularly, if it was like in an R1, it would meet all the specifications that's required but it's just in a zone that doesn't allow for it to be where they want to place it on their property. Okay. One question I did have when I even drove by it is how close is that property to the property line? Could it look like? It so was... their property line, there's like, he kind of drew it. There's a fence line um, right here that goes to their back fence. Okay. And they are for where the fence line is. So they're still on their properties. I think it was like five feet Okay, that's yeah. what we that's what we need to know because yeah. always we need to know how far it is from their property, and that needs to be marked out for us, which wasn't in this case, right? And and that to me is uh, a big question because of getting close to the other person's property. So I would always like to see that that property line come on down so we could see what the distance is from that carport to the property line. And you're get you're saying and you're guessing it's five feet. Yes. Or do you know? That's what they told me is that it's five feet. They did not draw it on the plot plan itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so it then, does meet the three foot. Yes, it does meet the three variance to that. The only variance you're allowing them for is it to be up front. You're not giving you a variance to their side. So okay. you can kind of see it a little better in Google Maps. It just looks really close, but there is a fence that goes over. Okay. Back by the tree. Yeah. And they're just putting it over their existing driveway and matching where what the driveway is at. Uh, we got a link. Thank you. Um, so this is just the ordinance that covers it. I also added it in the staff summary. Um, we got a so we also posted this on July 28th. We sent 11 certified letters to property owners. There was two for the proposal. And then out of the seven sent to utilities, there was two for the proposal also. So it doesn't take away from anybody's view or it's on a safety hazard or anything like that. No, um, it meets the 10 feet back off the road. Um, but really it's just because it's in a D3. Yeah. yeah. And they didn't necessarily choose a D3, did they? <laughs> no, <laughs> I think they're, they're not on like the most outer edge, but they're like a block away from the most outer edge of the downtown zone, which is a fairly large zone, it extends pretty far, so. Any other questions, comments? We'll entertain a motion to go out of public hearing. I move. Second. I have a motion and a second to go out of public hearing. All those in favor say aye. 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 And those opposed. Okay, we're back in regular session. I will entertain a motion to approve or deny. The uh, resolution providing for a variance at 417 South Avenue B. I make the motion that we approve. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve. Uh, call the roll, please. Ms. Bennett? Yes. Mr. Watkins? Yes. Ms. Baca? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Three. 
Council. And last but not least, any other business that we need to talk about? I think there is. Nothing can be big. I'm just for the record. Um, we're no longer on planning and zoning. They will be announcing, uh, the mayor will be announcing who they want to replace him on August 20th meeting. Okay. Uh, it great. If not, we'll make sure we send out um, who that'll be. You know, you guys. Uh, I got a question. What about that motion we tabled last time? We tabled it. Do we have to bring it back off the table and, and take it off because we found out things? Yeah. So we tabled something. I think if it's tabled, if it doesn't come back, it just dies. Does it just die? Yeah, it dies unless you request that it be brought back. That one, you have to request it to be brought back. Yeah. Any other questions, comments? I entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All approved. Say aye. 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 Adjourn. Okay.